Well, hello, my pickles, my snowflakes, my no matter what club members, and of course, my favorite Goldilocks. Do you have your cuppa? I have my cuppa. This is Wicked Joe Breakfast Blend Organic, and I got it at Stamacket. And that's that. And I have almost every flavor of the Wicked Joes. Or not flavor because I'm staying away from the flavor in the sense of fruity. So it's just, you know, breakfast blend, French, Sumatra, things like that. Anyway, here we are. It's just another day in paradise. And it's, it's October. That's the way we're doing it. And um, we're going to go at it another day. One of my favorite sayings is failing to plan is planning to fail. How simple is that? How much sense does that make for your life, for your food, for your just priorities of like what is important? For me, getting my food in order is what's important. Having just black coffee with no sweeteners and no flavors in the coffee like hazelnut and French vanilla and all the other ones. And just plain water. No flavored soda waters, no AHA, bubbly, Poland Springs, all of those, uh, La Croix, all of those that are on the market with the flavors could be telling your brain, hey, food's coming. Come on, let's start pumping that insulin and keeping you insulin resistant and not having the scale move the way you keep thinking you want it to move. I'm telling you the drastic measures, and for some of us it is drastic, to go from flavored coffees, fatty coffees, um, flavored teas, things like milk or creamers, and sweeteners of all kinds, artificial, alternative, and the real deal sugar or honey in your not eating window of intermittent fasting could be your problem. It is as simple as that. Trust me. Somebody passed this along to me, a turtle that's here, and she's been reading these books, so I immediately start watching the videos on intermittent fasting, and it's called Put this in front of it, clean intermittent fasting. And then what you have in your window of eating, for me it's OMAD, once a day between two and three in the afternoon. And I try to keep it under a thousand because my body doesn't need more any more works for me. And it's it's keeping me lean, it's keeping me at a at a fighting size where my my genes of the best size ever fit. And I'm delighted at my age to be fitting into these genes and knowing that when I get to my window of eating, I look forward to it. Today, for example, I'm having ribeye, I hope the butchery has it, ribeye, Brussels sprouts, excuse me, cauliflower crumbles, um, asparagus, sugar snap peas, and a little uh, broccoli so slaw salad with some um, Bragg's dressing on it. Maybe some feta cheese. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. But that will be enough to carry me from today, eating between two and three, to tomorrow, eating between two and three, with only black coffee and plain, unflavored um, Gerald Steiner water or plain water that has been filtered in our house. We have like a triple filter coming into the house and then the one that's on top of the counter and having that for the in-between bridges. And so Dr. Cyrus was right. Black coffee and water are bridges and they help and they make a difference. And I know a lot of you might be resistant to learning how to drink black coffee or black tea after so many years of having it be the, well, at least I can have that this way. I know that feeling. I know that, you know, at least I can have my coffee with Ketu creamer and my Zyla in it. Maybe sometimes some ghee or butter. I know that feeling. I know that in, that kind of, for me, arrogant entitlement 
but if it was it was keeping me from losing that oomph losing that little bit of a pooch that little bit of like weight that made the jeans feel f feel better they feel better they fit better they are better sized you know it just all works and i fought it for a long long time because i was considering my sweetened lightened coffee as as the small pleasure you know that's it that's all i'm getting and so the more i look into this intermittent clean intermittent fasting i realize that oh so it's not what you eat it's what you don't have during that intermittent time those 23 out for me 23 hours of nothing going in but black coffee and unflavored water bubbly or still right and so I still use my chronometer people say how come you still use your chronometer it's because it is just my own little way of you know being a list person being a list person having the accountability and knowing what I'm having so right now, before I um, turned on the record button, I went into chronometer to see what I have scheduled to eat today. And it's all those things I just told you. I wasn't sure if I had included the broccoli slaw salad or not, but yes, I had. And so I will prep that because, because failing to plan is planning to fail. And I guess with my food, I'm a planner in this crazy chaotic world. It's the one thing I have a little bit of control over, just like what's in my fridge and growing if it hasn't been thrown out or eaten because it's been bought and fresh and organic and it costs good money. So I tend to be very good about rotating what I've bought in my fridge for my meals for the week. Also, in part of the planning, Part. I go in around Thursday or Friday when the flyers come out and my tastes start saying, what haven't you had for a while? And I start planning the Monday through Thursday meals because those are always the, I wonder what you're going to have. Although Monday's pretty much been crack slaw and I'm not in any hurry to change that. Thank you very much. So really it's Tuesday and Wednesday that end up wild cards in what I'm having because Thursday is hot Italian sausage with the eggs and the little medallion of guac, of holy guacamole. Friday's burger. Saturday, for now, is pizza. Sunday is the big green egg, egg um, steak, and veggies. So really, I have two wild card days. So they end up being things like spare ribs or pork chops or maybe a leftover like beef chuck roast stew with cauliflower and carrots or an acorn squash or a spaghetti squash type of dinner. And so um, it's been great. And um, so it's, it's for me, it's an economical use of very expensive organic foods, grass-fed foods, and making sure I have enough room in my freezer to accommodate what next week's meal might be that, that I'm able to freeze, pull out, add a little to, and you know, there it is. So I like that. But I don't, I, I understand that failing to plan is planning to fail works for a lot of people. Um, what is it? Skin of your teeth, seat of your pants type that don't want to be constricted to like, well, I put that and I must have that. To me, that's the comfort zone because I feel comfortable knowing that I've planned what I'm having it's either in the fridge, in the freezer, in the works, so I can have it. Whereas some people don't like that. It kind of feels like, you can't tell me that. And it's like, they want to have what they want to have. And some of them like getting to mealtime and really not having a clue what they're going to have. That's not me. You know, I'm like, already I know what I'm wearing today when I do my um, Instacart shopping because it's just comforting. And so I will you know, after this video, I will prepare to do what it is I need to do to get dressed and ready. My car is vacuumed and disinfected. The tank is filled with gas. I've gone to the car wash. Boom, I'm good to go. And that's 
to me, comforting because things are in place because I'm a planner in that sense. Now, I learned years and years ago, you can plan for something, but don't have the expectation of the outcome. Well, that really doesn't apply to like getting the car ready, getting my outfit ready and planning my food for the day. But the expectation is, is that my drive will be ready. My clothes are ready. My meal will be ready later on. In fact, today, you know, I have to pick up the meat at the Brazilian butcher for today. I also have some animal welfare rated pork chops that I got at Whole Foods that will be Tuesday or Wednesday's meal. So I get excited about things like that. My expectation is that the freezer, you know, won't bust and I have, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of meats that go bad. That's that's an expectation that's like really on a scale of zero to 10, maybe 1%, it could happen. But I can't, I can't sit there and, and at one o'clock say, what am I going to have to eat at two today? I'm just not that, that way. I know people that are close to me that live that way and to them it's comfortable. And if they don't get to dinner planning, they do the do, 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 or I guess now it's done online. And somebody like me from Uber Eats is delivering it, right? Or DoorDash or something like that. And they're comfortable with that. I'm not because I, I like to know the ingredients. We aren't going out to eat type people. It's all done from the kitchen here. And we spend a lot, a lot of money every week on the production of what we have. And so for now, it works for us. If both of us didn't have any work and we didn't have any income to afford this, well, we'd be, we'd be up the crook, you know, and, and the paddle, the paddle's not working that well because the current's coming at us. So we, we would be, we'd be in trouble. But as far as, you know, each day that we can do it this way, it really works. So failing to plan is planning to fail. And, you know, not having anything in those 23 hours except the black coffee and the unflavored water is just, that's that. Okay, that's over there. Then what am I going to have? And sometimes looking through the fridge, how many Faya yogurts do I have? How many good cultured cottage cheeses do I have? Do I squeeze that into the menu to have it fit? Do I need more broccoli slaw? You know, I, simple little things like that, that I can replenish as I go. It's just my level of comfort. And that is my level of comfort because it's the one place that I still have some control in this world is with what food I put on the table for Greg and me. That's all. So it's as simple as that. Planning to fail is failing to, failing to plan is planning to, oh my God, you know what I mean. And so have a wonderful day. Plan works for me. And um, I'm very happy camper with that. And I'm very happy camper with my clean intermittent fasting. What a difference it's making. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye for now.